Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Totally present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybrock? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All present. I want to welcome everyone here. Thank you for being here this evening. If you have a cell phone, would you please put it on vibrate and turn it off if you would, please? Certainly appreciate it. Now we're going to have an invocation by Pastor Andrew Rice from the New Park Church of the Brothers. God, thank you for the day. Thank you for the beauty of changing seasons. Thank you for the beauty of each other. Thank you for this wonderful world. Thank you for giving us each other to see us through. Thank you for friendships. Thank you for family. Thank you for city. Thank you for neighbor. Thank you for yourself. Bless this meeting. Bless our council in your name. Amen. 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 You'll join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. There's a flag in the back of the room, if you would, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It was a boom boom motion by Mr. Craywalker, second by Mr. Mike Lowry. Any questions on the uh, lips? Call for the vote, please. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm here, I guess. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Due to the fact that I'm completely present, I vote yes. Okay. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Yes. No? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's an ADD problem. Hey, Well, I got through this room today. Hello, we're going Mr. Craig. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Communications tonight. I see we have a proclamation from the Nicolau Church of the Brother. We're celebrating 100 years. I would ask uh, Pastor Andrew Wright and Mr. Mike Mead to come up and join me in front here if you would please. Right up here, I'll come out here with me. Let me tell you 
take good care of it. Oh. Okay, under communications, we now have a presentation by Mike Wolfer of the Nicolau City Tax Administrator. Mike, would you go up to the podium if you would, please? Just address us if you would. Thank you. Thanks, Dick. My name is Mike Vogel, I'm tax administrator, city of New Carlisle. Uh, I was asked to come and give a little presentation on tax collections and what we're doing as far as uh, compliance activities. Uh, as a review, uh, September, well, through September, uh, collections are down about a percent from the prior year. However, September was uh, a very good amount as far as individual collections, which is roughly 40% of what normally comes in. We were at 120-some percent over the prior year. Most of this is due, in my opinion, to uh, increased compliance work. But increased compliance work uh, has consisted of uh, the law department a legal letter that we're sending out, uh, which informs individuals that we will be filing civil complaints uh, against them should their balances not be taken care of. Uh, this has stirred some people to start paying, and uh, that has increased the amount of money that we've been receiving. In addition to that, we did file four civil complaints. I don't know when the last time uh, those have been used. Of the four, one is paid in full, two are starting to make payments, and the, third, the fourth one uh, we have not heard from yet. Two of the cases have been scheduled for uh, small claims court uh, in uh, Springfield on November 3rd. So those will be the first two cases uh, that we will have filed uh, and hopefully get a judgment on uh, once those cases are completed. Um, the third case I had asked for voluntary dismissal today because that one had been paid in full. Uh, the fourth case, as I said, we have not heard from. The other thing that we're doing, um, I've been out knocking on doors. And an example of what that has, uh, is what happened with that. Uh, well, I had three individuals come in today, or one person came in with the information for three individuals that added $8,000 to our accounts receivable. That's money we didn't know was out there to be collected. Uh, I will set up arrangements with those individuals to try and get that money paid off. So, those are the things that we've been doing. Uh, I will have increased activity with the law letter uh, and get that taken care of. And then there will be additional field work uh, that happens. I issue an appearance order when I go out in the field normally because these people have not filed in many instances. Some have balances and have not filed. Um, it seems to work best when I put the piece of paper in their hands rather than sending it uh, through the mail. And that's what has happened uh, with the instance today. In fact, there was another individual who came in and ended up not owing us anything, but we cleared out uh, six years uh, of delinquency. And that's, I hate chasing paper, but I don't know what's owed us unless that paper comes Council, you have questions? Like? Yes, Mr. Lowe. Uh, before you spoke about it, okay, spoke of, I just have a question. Are these people, I don't know, but they just ran the gamut to get away as long as they could, or did they actually not know that they were the taxes? They filed the returns, so, and they so got they statements pay. every month, yes. Okay, so they knew they were just yes. stressing that. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Council, anyone else? Yes, John, please. Yeah, I'm glad to hear this, Mike. You know, I've tried a lot because, you know, that's one of my, you know, things I'm really into is trying to get the tax done. 
to keep you um, updated and Mike did a great job of helping explain where he's at and what he's working on and that is a real priority in our office. Um, for the uh, month of September, our total revenue we took in this month was $332,726.95. Our total expenses for the month of September were $207,848.55. Our year to date so far we've collected a, a little over 80% of what we've anticipated and that amount is $3,889,498.84. Our 
And again, we're still really trying to watch our expenses at this point in the year. We spent about 73 and a little over half, 73 and a half percent of our estimated uh, expenses, and that comes in at three million four hundred thirty-six thousand two hundred seven dollars and twenty cents. Our budget is really, really getting um, um, frugal. We're, we're only putting out what we need to spend right now, and we're still trying to come in at uh, under what we estimated and were approved to spend. Just because we've had a lot of extra expenses starting out in the beginning of the year. So we'll keep you informed on that. We have converted over to our new software that was in place last year. So this is our first month. Um, most of the bugs are out of it. It's just taken a little time to uh, create some new reports for you. These are pretty much duplicated as to what you're used to seeing. So anything that you would like to see an additional, you know, please let um, mayor, manager know and I'll I'll get with her and produce what you would like to see. Um, if there's any question that can entertain? Council, yes. Yes. Do you have any final results on the numbers for the swimming pool? The swimming pool right now stands at um, almost 11,000 in the red. But is that the last, that's what I'm Yes, I believe. Right? Well, we have, I have a few things in the encumbrances, which is, like a pretend spend, it's a PO okay. for expenditures for the, um, we have some pop and a few other bills that haven't come through yet. But other than that, it should be real close to about 11,000. And we've already put in uh, 51,000 from the general fund this year also, and we're still short. Any suggestions on how to fix that problem and make it better? Anything that you can see in your books that maybe the rest of us can't see? If, if we can't get the attendance up, it's a matter of how it's much do you want to keep spending on it because it is not profitable at all. Yeah, um, it's back to the weather again, I understand. So. We got the weather. Um, two years ago, I believe I was told they sold a two year pass. So two years ago, the revenue was a little better. And of course, this year, a lot of people were on that free pass so we didn't have any additional right now that's going to be my next question how you're looking down here when is that kicking again and we can do that again uh that's kind of an on hold topic right now we i anticipate to try it again um, but as you're aware of the current situation we're looking at i, I just kind of hold i've had a couple questions we, we, we're looking at yeah, we're looking at different scenarios where it's a buy one, get one in a discount if it's one year, but we haven't uh, approached to sell the passes currently uh, pending you know the outcomes or stuff like that. But I did want to update the fifty one thousand that we had put in this year. Part of that fifty one thousand is about twenty five to twenty eight thousand from last year. Uh, the books for the pool was not closed last year. Okay. And so part of that 51, or about 28 of that, is from last year, and then the other portion plus some would be this year. So it's really divvied up by two years. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. You know else? Any other questions for the final time? Thank you. Okay, then we'll continue with the service discussion. Uh, Mr. Pickle. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Good evening, Mayor and Council of Citizens of New Carlisle. I just have a couple quick items. I would like to update everybody on the New Carlisle Water Meter Upgrade Project. We just had a meeting with uh, not just our distributor we purchased meters from, but the actual manufacturer. Um, it got delayed because we were within a 60-day window to receive the newer uh, model. Bottom's still the same. Head is 95% uh, the same, only the trans uh, transmits the signal and records more data. So it's just a new and upgraded head for the same price as our bid price. So that put our delivery date out uh, told the he said it'd be about the second Friday in November. So let's say mid-November when we're supposed to get the product. Um, the next item would be lemon brush pickup. The last month for this season it will be November's uh, pickup. You, you can call in to the street department at 845-3058 or the city building. Anyway, uh, you can get a hold of the city, we'll get it scheduled. And then we'll pick it up on the second week of, that, of November. And then uh, we will be looking at it to possibly be starting it back up next year. And the last item I have is, uh, I don't need to really put out any more information about it uh, until we have a final, another a new buster report, but any questions pertaining to the uh, gas leak at Speedway? 
Council, any questions on that? Yes, Mr. Rankin. Well, I, I don't have a question on the on the gas situation. Should, that, my question was on the leaf pickups. I don't, okay. I don't mean to segue off on something else. Um, you mentioned that the date, the last dates to have that um, the stuff set up for the curbside pickup. Uh, also, can they can people take the leaves and put them behind the Madison School? Is that still an option? And what's the last date for that? If that is. Oh, you're on leaves. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm about limbs. That's not, they're not related, those are two different things. Ah, uh, similar. Oh, um, <laughs> yard waste, I assume they all fell in the same category. Yeah, we, we started uh, leaf pickup today in, in section one, but yes, if you uh, would like to get your leaves removed quicker than what, uh, to the area that we're getting to, you're more than welcome to take them to the old Madison Street School and dump them in the leaf pile that has already started. Uh, please take your bags and any other debris or trash uh, back with you, though. Yes, Josh. Okay, just go back to the water. Then. Yeah. And uh, as far as I know, drinking water is okay. Yes. Good. And I don't know. Okay. Explain to me. I know you. you know, I've been following the interview. So it's south of the wells, and you're saying the water flows south naturally. Yes. Can you explain that just a little bit? You know, does it then go out someplace else? Turn around, come back. <laughs> explain. Uh, the aquifer that the gas leak went into in our particular area flows from north to south. So as you had indicated, our water well intakes are north of the lake, about 1,200 feet. And so that water is already flowing underground uh, in a very slow rate. Uh, we're talking at this 1,200 foot, it's, it could, if it was flowing towards our wells, it could take potentially five years, maybe shorter, but usually a little bit longer to flow that distance. So if you think about 1,200 feet, something flowing, taking about five years to get there, and only about another block or half a block to a block south of our five-year time of travel and where Speedway is located is our 30-year. So there's not much distance in there. Um, in my interview with WHIO, I had shown our delineation map, which shows our protection area, and that outer bottom line was so close to the line of Speedway sits on it. Five years, it could even be 30 years by the time that water could flow there naturally. The tank is fixed and it's uh, the, the tank is empty and is out of service. Okay. Okay, now Speedway is going to do some remodeling. Are we going to ever fix that tank and use it again? Um, you know. At this time, I don't have any comments on that. Uh, <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Zander. Um, one word salt. Uh, softening or rock salt for uh, snow? Street salt. Snow salt. Um, we have our 75 ton that's in house, and I'm in talks with Kettering, uh, Miami County, with getting additional 75 tons. And then I just got a voicemail on Friday from someone out of Cincinnati. I don't know much about it, I haven't returned his call, but maybe another possible lead. Salt's running, or salt that we look to purchase is going to be running around 110 to 120 dollars a ton. Anyone else? Anything? Just one more comment on the water. Could you just explain to people, please, that we have a water treatment plant, that we test this water all the time, and so forth, and they're worried about it getting into the pipes. You can't get into the pipes unless it goes through our treatment plant. Coming into their homes, that's what I'm referencing. We treat for our, we treat for our, or we test by the Ohio EPA standards for a lot of things. Too many of the name. Um, however, because of this instance, um, usually once a year we'll test for uh, volatile compounds or um, some other you know, crazy stuff. But because of the gas leak, uh, the EPA has had them test at our well site during that week for total petroleum. So they're testing for total means any kind of petroleum that's underneath the sun they're going to test for. And I'm not sure if it's going to be every six months for the next year or two. Um, I haven't heard that, but, uh, but yes, they are testing it, and they will tell us if it ever gets in there, um, uh, if it ever does. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? Mr. Pico, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, then we're continuing with the planning and zoning discussion. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the planning uh, department activity for 2014, uh, September 2014. Uh, had three complaints come through the office that brings our year-to-date total up to 48. Uh, 17 yellow tags, verbal warnings, uh, and letter warnings went out. Uh, brings our year-to-date total up to 143. Four violation notices went out. Brings our year-to-date total up to 36. 
issued 13 grass violations, bringing a year-to-date total up to 116. Uh, one property abatement was grass, brings a year-to-date total up for one nuisance abatement, 28 grass abatements. We have 15 zoning permits come through the office, uh, brings a uh, total up to 95 for the year. Some of the current work I have been working on, sidewalk replacement programs is a quick update on that. I know I talked about it a little bit last meeting. Um, we had seven more permits come through uh, in the month of September. That brings our increase of our total panels are now 150, which was an increase from 35 panels from last month too. So like I said before, uh, this program has actually took off very uh, in ways I never thought it would, but we are very appreciative that the citizens have done the work on their own. Um, farmers market is now closed for the season. It was a banner year for that. We're looking to improve that bigger and better for next year as well. Uh, ordinance reminder, 128033, accessory uses. Now's the time of year where a lot of people bring their boats, RVs, their pop-up their pop campers back from where, um, where they're doing or they winterize them. Um, just a reminder to our citizens that if you do leave them on your property, they do have to be on an approved surface, cement, asphalt, or crushed limestone gravel, and they do have to be behind your house or to the side of your house. They can never be in the front of your yard. Planning Board and Board of Zoning Appeals, there are no hearings of September. There are projects in the pipeline that will require these boards to meet. And another quick update for the following their projects. Still going to do the planning, the planning and zoning code review. Uh, we're going to look at wood piles on property. We're going to look at our sign code. We're also going to look at our recreational vehicle ordinance code. We're also going to do a housing survey, look into uh, vacant housing and when we're re registration ordinances. And we're also going to prepare for the flower baskets in spring of 2015. The vacant house report right down in time for this month, so uh, we're at 71, which puts us around our average that we are uh, month by month by month. That is all I have. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Council, Mr. Lyle. is present time. Is there a big problem in the car now with wood piles on property? I would say it's been that for quite a while, and it kind of went away. You know, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a big problem by any means, um, but it is something that we need to get regulated. Um, we do have a lot of people in town that use this wood to heat their home. Okay. So the question is going to lie in when is it a safety concern, when is it too much on your property. Um, if, you have, if you do have a stack, what's too high to constitute a safety hazard? So those are the general things we're, we're going to be looking at. We're not going to be looking at this ordinance to say, no, you can't have it. We just need to regulate it a little better. Okay. And is there someone in town that has it all over your property that is selling it? I don't know if they're selling it or not. Um, that is hard to prove at this point in time. Um, but there is a parcel that does have a lot, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Let's go over Mr. McIntyre. How did the uh, new Carlisle's Open for Business program go? Were you happy with the results so far? Or well, no, we're still, we're still doing it. I just, I, I paused it for the past couple of months because I want to make sure, after talking with our city manager about it, that, you know, that the, the, the things that we are promoting, that the business owner is in a grand sign that they want to be seen. That's understandable. You know, um, some people don't want to sell their property and some people don't want it all over YouTube on the internet and the newspapers. Uh, but it is something that will be starting back up here in the coming months. We just, again, we need to find point, you know, the do's and don'ts, essentially. Sure. Sure. Mr. Craig Rocker. Okay. Uh, there's two things on that sidewalk thing that's been taken care of. Um, I had somebody approach me the other day so that they're having a hard time uh, finding somebody just to do two block, you know, two little squares or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and gave them a name person of mine. And any time you have that, please pass them on to me because I do have a list of people that have done one or two panels. And, you know, there, there are people out there that do them. They might have to wait a couple of weeks till that person has another job and they'll just knock it out on the same day. But there are ways to get that alleviated. Right. Um, under the Canning uh, Board and Board of Zoning, is there products in the pipeline? Are they businesses or are they uh, Someone, yeah. I know we can't say specific. It's a little mixture of business and residential. Absolutely. Okay. Sure. Anyone else? Mr. Bridges, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, continuing, excuse me, with our fire discussion, Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, citizens and guests. Uh, for September of 2014, the report is as follows. We call our fire division responded to a combined total of 100 calls for service during the month of September 2014. Fire responses totaled 14 with an average response time of 5 minutes 39 seconds. 
The division responded to 86 medical emergency calls for a service, or rather, service with an average response time of 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Elizabeth Township statistics are uh, the Elizabeth Township Fire Department responded to 18 calls for service during the month of September 2014. Fire responses totaled 5, and emergency medical responses totaled 13. There are 14 responses into the Township of Elizabeth, one response to the village of Cashtown, and three responses into the city of New Colorado. Uh, some significant events on 9 2 14 at 906 White Pine, there was a structure fire. Uh, the fire was brought uh, quickly under control by the crews here in New Colorado with the help of the mutual aid crews. There were no injuries, uh, but there was some property loss. On 9 26 at 314 Gatherwood, another structure fire, and again was brought under control very quickly by the members of the New Colorado Fire Division with our mutual aid partners. And again, there was no injuries. And the same day, uh, New Colorado Clint II and myself responded uh, with Miami, Bethel, Miami, on a fatal crash at 571 and 201. Um, again, that, that was a fatal crash with a pretty negative result, but uh, all the crews worked together quickly to get things taken care of and get care of on the ground, um, and we mitigated that situation. Uh, about along our, I don't know if some of you have seen our new division members wearing their new t-shirts. Uh, this is our new t-shirt design. We had an internal design contest to the crews inside the fire department, and both the front and the back design were picked from designs submitted by our crews. So we put those into production uh, last month, and the guys have been wearing them. Uh, and to follow up on Mr. Craybock's question about the tanks, once they start building the new speedway, they're most likely going to have to rip all the tanks off, put new ones in, depending on the age of the tank. Um, Buster requires the full inspection of the tank when they go to build. Usually when they're doing excavation on the site, they need to move the tanks anyway. So it's most likely that they'll take all the tanks out and put new ones in. With that, if you have any questions, I'll entertain them. Yes. Chief Eric, I wasn't sure if you were here at the last meeting. I just want to say thank you uh, to you and the fire department for the help during the festival for the fireworks display and help get that taken care of. So Certainly. Thank you. No problem. Everything went well. Very much so. Thank you. <coughs> Appreciate it. Anyone else? Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Chief Phillips had a great time at the fire open house. Do you know how many people attended by any chance? I think it was like, when I left, there was like 150 people had come or gone. Right. That was about our estimation. It was about 150 people. It went well. Uh, we had a lot of people in and out. <coughs> Some good events going on. We passed out a lot of uh, fire prevention material to adults and children. So. All right, the kids were time. When I was there, the kids loved the fire hats and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were having a good time. We're going to definitely do it again next year. Oh, it was good to be there, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Will you uh, be hanging out to do anything during uh, we will. the thing? We will. We have a crew on staff to go out and hang out to Great. Glad to hear that. Thank you again for all the help with the heritage of flight. No problem. We really appreciate everything you do for us. Thank you. All right, then with the police discussion, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Ms. Jones, Mary Bell, and citizens. For September 2014, reports by Mr. Lyle deputies, they took 15. Reports by county deputies, they took 32. Total of 47 reports for the city. Miles Patrol, 2,298. Miscellaneous calls, 94, and one follow-up investigation. Under traffic information, we had 32 traffic stops, and there was 25 citations issued. Then we had OVI. We had eight OVIs. There was actually eight charges. Driving under suspension, there was 10. Parking citations, we had 16. No abandoned or towed vehicles. One non-injury accident. And uh, we did not take any injury accidents, although there was a several. Under arrest information, uh, criminal adult arrest, there were seven. Uh, charges with those were 11. Criminal juvenile arrest one. <coughs> juvenile had two charges against him. There was three warrants filed, a uh, three warrant arrest, and no warrants filed. <coughs> Excuse me. Under special interest, we had one assault, one breaking and entering, six thefts, no vandalism, 12 911 hang ups, uh, no phone harassments. We had no domestic violence with an assault. We had three verbal domestic violence, one lockout, one peace officer, four alarms, and 31 assists. And including this month, on Monday, September 14th, on Monday, September 
and it's 2014. It was Deputy Ken Major Sack was assigned to the city of New Corral for the Uniform Patrol Division. Deputy Major Sack began his law enforcement career in 1983 and was hired in May of 2011 to Clark County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Major Sack lives in New Corral with his wife and three children who attend the Cumpson Middle Schools. Deputy Major Sack will be an asset to the city of New Carlisle. And currently we have all four of our deputies working up here very close to the area. Uh, so that's a big plus for us if we would need them. And I just want to put out a reminder that this Saturday, October 25th, is Beggar's Night for all of Clark County and the hours for trick or treat, trick or treat would be 6P to 8P. And here's just some safety tips, but they are important. Um, we've, we've not had an issue in several years, but that doesn't mean something can't crop up. Just instruct your children not to eat any treats until they bring them home and you examine them. Um, and, and that may seem minor, but that's really important, especially for the younger kids. And this way you can check on the candy and you can get the best stuff yourself. <laughs> um, then make sure your child knows or instruct your child to never go into a stranger's house or get into a car. Um, like I said, we've not had an issue like that, but we don't want one. They need to know uh, if someone invites them in the house, uh, they just need to stay on the steps. That was common for many years, but that's ceased in doing a lot of that. And it is a good idea if, to let us know if there's any problems. And make sure your child carries a flashlight, glow stick, or something reflective uh, so cars are visible to cars. We, a lot of times, these little guys are out running around and, and it's hard to see out of mask and, and whatever they may have uncovered their face. And then we have cars are trying to get the children from point A to point B to get more candy. And, and uh, just make sure if you send one of your grandchildren or your children out that they can see properly. And have them as a group if they're without an adult and that's just a safer thing for them to do. Um, we will have a deputy on patrol up here that night for that time period and uh, hopefully it will go like the last several years with an incident free. Question for Sergeant? Any one plus, Ms. Flower? Sergeant, we're allowed to have a cold and sorry to make it here a while while we've got a couple questions. For sure. How many cruisers do you see in Newport Island at the present time? I mean, do they own at the present time? Mm -hmm. hmm. How is the Jeep Store Service? That'd be five. Yeah, the Jeep Store Service, five. Five. How many are usable? Pardon? How many are usable? Right now, four. Just four? Four or five. I'd like to ask you to please, if you could, briefly somehow rate those groups, what kind of shape they're in, how you feel about driving Well, I know you for a while, so don't, please don't get upset when I say Oh, no, I'm fine. Please don't that, that Actually, I know you will be, but I that's a good question because at some point in time, uh, it's going to have to be addressed anyhow. We, we currently need two patrol cars. We could use a third one. So we are already down two cars and looking at a third one. Now, the mileage is an extreme. I think we're looking at uh, uh, that 98 Ford we have only had like 67,000 miles on it, but it's a 98, and you have seats that are broke down. Um, we're just well out. The guys are running, just about the whole shift up here, and we have the seats going. We have some seats we have. Uh, uh, plastic tabs on, holding the seats together. And, um, we've just gotten to this point because of our budget. We have really tried, Ms. Jones and I, have worked together for the last couple of years to put a Band-Aid on our problem, and that's what it's been, a Band-Aid. Um, we really need to replace some equipment. That came in here tonight, for instance. We have a problem with our reporting system, they may discontinue it, and if they do, I'll need four new laptops. And if not, they will have to go someplace other than the substation to do a report. That would either down, be downtown um, at headquarters or out at the east office. 
So, we're in dire need of funding. Does New Devon have investment? That is not a that is not what I'd like for him to have, but yes, he does have one. But is it up to standard? I need to check on the date on it. The dates are critical on those. Um, for years, we didn't worry about the dates, the expiration date, until we actually had an officer in our area leave, take a vest with him, and was shot in the vest. Okay. It was outdated, and he expired. Okay. Last couple of vests that the you fellows have received, did they come from the city or from someone else? They came from donations, although I have been working uh, with the lieutenant and some of the personnel at the sheriff's office, and there is a good chance that uh, they may assist us with some of those vests this year. Okay. But the last couple did come from some of those donations? Yes, the FW donated the money for the last couple. Okay. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Okay. And I feel bad, um, and just say it straight out, to be in the city and be a part of the city and put the police officers on the street that's not in any one condition because they should be in any one condition at all times, okay? Uh, to you, I apologize for that. Thank you. That's fine, sir. We will let's take a moment to address. Okay, um, did we get the money yet to my insurance company? Yes. We got the money from the insurance company. That can go to the board and the cruiser. Is that an earmark? Or if we don't need it to get through the rest of the year. <laughs> for the police department, right. Okay. Well, about the budget next year, I'm sure you're working on it, pulling your hair out, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of thin there, so. You know, it's okay. Okay. We're talking about yeah. mine, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, will we, will we be able to, who would be able to afford one next year? It's actually not in the budget yet. Um, we tried to get a balance to get it to, um, to get it approved to get a start, but we're, we're looking to see where else we can, what are the capital improvements we can go without to try to get, um, get it, you know, spread out a little bit. But right now the expenses have gone up so high with just the day-to-days and the revenue is down from, like we talked about earlier, local government, just a lot of things that aren't coming in and it's, it's not even as good as the budget we're working on this year and this year we we ran out halfway through. I mean we're 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 still looking, we're still working on it. Okay. Say uh, it that the uh, I don't know what I'll call it levy. Is it a levy? That's what passes. No, if it passes. We still won't get the money to two thousand sixteen, is that correct? No, it's tw it starts in January twenty fifteen. Well, when do we get to, when do we start? Well, if it's withdrawn from their paycheck, we'll get it then. If they pay quarterly, we'll get it at the quarter. Or if people wait till the end of the year, then yes, you're right, it would be next December. Okay. Well, yeah, it'll be December. It's on, it's on that issue. Mm -hmm. right in December. So, still, it's going to be a time period there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It kind of bothers I'm not here, Rick, you know, it kind of bothers me about the cruisers. You know. Yeah, we went through this one thing several years ago. Too, so. okay. Anyone else? Council? Sergeant, thank you. I feel better. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Greg, though. <laughs> I want this haircut. I appreciate it. Hi. Is there a floor on the city manager, please? Yes, thank you. Under informational items in your packet, you had a copy of a resignation from our uh, previous director of law. I'm um, a to draw for effective October the 9th, and I need a motion of council to um, accept that resignation. Mr. Mayor, yes. Make a motion to accept Miguel Pedraza's resignation letter. Second. Any discussion on that? I have a question. Do we know how much we owe Mr. Pedraza before we send him on this? Okay, and uh, do you know when we'll get that? Or we have been asking for invoices for a couple years. All right, just wondering. Mm -hmm. So we're going. We'll, we'll get there. Well, I just want to make sure that we don't owe a lot more than we think we do. Any, any other questions? Anybody? Anything? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Mr. Lowell. 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 Mr. Lowell.
uh, with that question, uh, did he not, he being Mr. Uh, Pedroza, tell you that uh, he wouldn't hit you all at once with what was there in the Correct. with the city? Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Okay, Mr. Could you call for the vote, please? Yeah, Thank I you. agree. Mr. Craig Barger? Okay. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you. Okay, then, at this point, I would like to introduce two counsel into the citizens of New Carlisle. Lynette Dangle, who is to my right here, and she is who I would like to have named as our next director of law. And her partner, Jamie Cragen, is in the audience. Um, he will represent the city if Lynette is unavailable. Did you have anything you'd like to say? <laughs> you put me on the spot. Uh, that's okay. Um, good evening, uh, good. Mr. Mayor, Council, other members of the city, and of course the residents. Um, it's been a pleasure to be able to work to serve the city of New Carlisle in the limited capacity that I have over the last year to, or two in working uh, with Mrs. Jones. And um, I very much enjoyed working with your employees, your staff, your management. And uh, it, is, it has been our pleasure. Um, Jamie and I have represented uh, municipal municipalities, cities, villages, um, other political subdivisions, school boards of education. I have dedicated uh, the better part of 18 years to doing that. And um, I'm passionate about it. Uh, so is Jamie. And uh, it would be absolutely our pleasure to be able to serve and uh, to do so reasonably and to do so for the betterment of your community. Thanks, you're welcome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Both of you. Uh, finishing up then with my management report, also in your packet was a flyer uh, from Pathstone. I met with three ladies from this organization last week, and they are asking that we try to get the word out. This is an organization that is, whole, their whole existence is to help farm workers. Um, they help you to find a career. They help with training at the expense of Pathstone. Um, they do whether you want to leave farm work and go to other aspirations or if you want to learn more skills, pesticide control, welding, anything that you can use at the farm, they will see that you get the training. They are very um, much concerned that people think that this is only for the uh, Latino community, and they want to make sure that people understand this is open to anybody in the farm community. So uh, I encourage you, if you have any questions about this, I have information at the city building. I'd be glad to share it with you. Um, but it sounds like a wonderful program, and they're very excited to try to get the word out that they're available and they want to help people. And with that, that is the end of my uh, report. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. Okay. Ralph, so any questions for the city manager? Thank you very much. Very uh, resolutions, committee reports, Reverend Ralph. So I let's go to comments, members of the public. Any, anyone have any comments this evening, members of the public? Again, thank you all for being here. Committee reports. None tonight. None tonight. Resolutions, we have none tonight. Ordinances, we do have ordinances, if you would, sir. Ordinance 14-46, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a sewer easement agreement with CVS, store number 3457, Ohio, LCC. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. We adopt ordinance 14-46. Second. It's a three-way tie. Um, just as an explanation of this ordinance, this is just we're, we're finishing up the last little items to do with the CBS um, move to the new location. Um, this, we've had this in the works for quite a while, and it was just a matter of signing the paperwork to get the easement so that the city does still have access to the sewer line that was relocated when CBS relocated. Any questions? <coughs> Excuse me, any questions? Call for the vote, please. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor Blanca? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. 
Mr. Ricklauer? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Go ahead when you're ready, please. Ordinance 14 48, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of rock salt. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Motion to adopt. Ordinance 14 48. Second. Okay, we were talking about salt earlier. This is the other salt that the city uses quite a bit of, and this is for our water plant. Um, we only had one bid this time. Came in at 109.78. Uh, Mr. Kitka, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you remember what it was last year? It seems like it was lower. $99 and some change. Yeah, that's what I thought. It went up about $10 a ton. Any questions? Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Ricklauer? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Marshall? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Ordinance 14 49 E, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance employing a director of law and authorizing the city manager to sign a contract to hire and declare it an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 14 49 E. Second. And this ordinance then, again, is as we spoke about earlier, would be to appoint Mrs. Dinkler and in her stead, Mr. Cragen, um, as our law director for the city of New Carlisle and also authorizing me uh, to sign the contract. Can we go with that motion again? That motion? Yes. I do. Okay. Right. Okay. Council, any questions? Mr. Reynolds. Uh, welcome, by the way. Uh, how long is the contract for I was reading it didn't state uh, how long it's for? The, the rates are for the next year. For next year? Right. All right. Well, so then like every year we'll revalue your rates then? Is that what you're saying in the contract? There's a chance that they could go up or down. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. So <laughs> down would be very nice. <laughs> you, you, you never know. There are a lot of hungry lawyers out there for a few years. <laughs> um, so, uh, all right. And my other question would be, uh, like the meeting can't we can cancel this at any time and so can she with 60 right. days request right yeah there's an evergreen provision in it that would make it uh renew from year to year there's also a notice provision for cancellation all right so so if we were to cancel you per se you, you would have to have a 60-day notice that's that's the notice provision all right yes. and then with miguel it wasn't that way correct we didn't have a contract with miguel or the previous uh law director all right and he resigned so well, that's the situation. Well, yeah, but I'm just, just asking some questions here. So, well, that's the questions I have. So, okay. all set. Good. Anyone else? Well, I was just going to I was just going to address the the cancellation, the notice provision in these types of cancellations um, is often beneficial if you want to hire a new law director to have work transitioned. Um, so that there is no interest in the city left unattended. Right. Um, any lawyer is required to turn over files of any client when they're asked for. Lawyer can retain a copy uh, for their own safekeeping or reference, but um, those, are, those are just standard provisions to look out for the best interest of the client. All right, and so every year we'll have to vote. Uh, it'll automatically renew, and then if the pay does increase or go down, we'll have to reapprove the contract, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Collier, please. Call for the vote. Mr. Mark Lauer. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Counselor, welcome to New Carlisle. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay, Mr. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Mr. Rick Lauer. As well, welcome to Ford. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Craig Welcome to that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we need my verbal. Yes. Can't shake your verbal. <laughs> Thank you, both, both of you. Welcome. Welcome, both of you. We really appreciate you being here this evening, and hopefully things will work out very well. Thank we you very much.
Okay, other business. We're now at other business. Uh, me and Mr. Lowry want to say something. Is anybody else in the other business tonight? Mr. Lowry, for that, if you will. A couple things if you don't mind, okay? Yeah. If I get too lanky or get off track, we'll grab one. Get it and let me know, okay? <laughs> Uh, I show things we'll talk about. Uh, guess what we've been doing over there? Social media. It's a pain in the bar. I have it. I use it. Talk to friends and family. Please, don't believe everything you see on social media. Just went through the last week of someone complaining because there are two speedways in town. Complaining that it's this city or it's this city's problem. They need to fix it and whatnot. I have never heard of anything so ridiculous in my life. I uh, showed you more than clicked a lot and wrong, but it just upset me. Second thing is about the gas. There is not a person in this room at that table or this table that does not have someone in this city other than one that drinks the water. I would never let her, my grandkids, my wife, my son, or anyone else to drink the water for one I heard up for a second. I thought there was something in it that there shouldn't be. It's just not happening. We didn't cover up anything. The city didn't cover up anything. I asked about it immediately as soon as I heard about it. Got every answer I needed from you. Uh, people on social media, social media, I don't know what the deal is. Do they like to just maybe aggravate, make yourself feel a little bit more important than what they really are? I have no idea. Don't believe all that stuff. Come to a meeting and ask someone. Pick up the phone, call Kim, call Kim, call anybody. It didn't happen, okay? I don't care if Speedway puts 14 gas stations in town and they hire 10 people at least alone. A run for New Carlisle on the taxes, okay? And make New Carlisle for her, okay? I don't care if you go to Parkland and get your gas money. Stay there. Live in Parkland. Don't really need you if you're really upset about two service stations having the same name. Um, I'm sorry, it upset me, okay? Yeah, uh, just for your information. You live in a city you want to buy because it has two service stations. Do they complain because there's seven pizza places in town? No. They just want to complain. Yeah, I, I found out that there's other communities that have two speedways right across the street. Sure there there just just you know, when somebody else gets on social media and says, now this is a real killer. New car lines been going downhill ever since they quit having fire. <laughs> this guy is running for public office in North Carolina. Let's elect him because I'm guaranteed he'll have fireworks every day to make his city great. You know? Okay. I'm not going to you are a liar. I'm not. He's got a list of I don't know what I'm okay? <laughs> Would you like a breather? No, I'm good. I'm just going to look at my notes. Contract for city police last year for the city. Uh, Sheriff's got three thousand three hundred $347,000. $347,992. This year, I'm sorry, last year, 336,000, that's just about 11 and three quarter thousand dollars. Salt last year, 7102, this year, 99.53. Cruiser in 2010 was $20,503, with seven to nine thousand dollars of additions to make it a cruise cruiser. Lights, radio, safety, and whatnot. Okay? Today's price for that cruiser alone is twenty-seven thousand dollars. That's not got the safety here, Mr. Lights ready to work on okay. Just spoke to Sergeant Underwood. We've got five cruisers, three of them are good, the rest of them are bad. They got mileage in them, they're patching the seats. Um, also doesn't have a proper vest, and the last two or three vests that have been bought have been bought by new members. And I know that for a fact because I'm a member of Proud member of the American League who has donated at least two of them. Okay, you got what? Eight or nine hundred dollars a piece? Mm -hmm. Because the city could not afford it. We have bad streets. Go back to social media, you've got people complaining about the bad streets. Okay? There's streets in town and I 
tell my wife not to drive her in that bad. I'm not upset because I know there was no money to fix them. They was never fixed right. In 1950, they wasn't built right, am I correct? They wasn't built right to start with. We had nothing to do with it, but we had to deal with the problem. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is, we need to tax. And we don't give them the proper equipment to do so. Okay? I understand that being at home, you don't want to spend any more money than you have to. I would much rather take my wife out and eat seven times a night or go buy another new car, or do this, or do that, toys. But it's our city, not his, or his. It's our cause. And it belongs to the people who do it. We are the keepers. We've got to take care of it. Urge everything. The tax, please over here. We need it. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Any other comments this time? Okay, I'm going to read a couple other things here. City offices are closed Tuesday, November the 11th, 2014, for Veterans Day, and Thursday, November 27th, Friday, which is a Friday, and November 28th. 2014 for Thanksgiving. There's a joint government meeting Monday, January 26, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. at Bradford Township. And the Nicolau Crime Watch meeting on Wednesday, November the 12th, 2014 at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith uh, Shelter House. And then there will be election day, Tuesday, November the 4th, 2014. We have a city income tax issue on the ballot. This is basically what uh, Mr. Lawler was just talking about. And I would open that up to anyone that would like to make a comment at this point on the income tax issue on the ballot. No, it's Paul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if everyone could afford me some time here. Um, this is an issue that I know a lot of us feel very strongly about, and I'm very passionate about it too. Uh, today, you, you heard from us, you heard from the city and about some of the financial problems that we have. You know, we, we really haven't recovered from the recession, this great recession, despite what you may read. Small bedroom communities like ours are still hurting because we don't have the large business base. We wish we did, and we're trying, we're trying to get that going, but right now we don't have the large um, business base that a lot of the other suburbs of Dayton and a lot of the areas around the Miami Valley have. And the problem with that is that costs have gone up. It costs a lot of money for salt. It costs a lot of money for road construction. We have to have donations to get vests for our police officers. Uh, the list can go on and on of times we have to cut, cut costs or rely on the, the kindness of, of organizations to, to donate to make sure that people can have what we need to make the city run. Uh, a city like ours, in most cities, but a city definitely like ours, gets most of our money we get it from the income tax, yes. We get it from taxes from business, yes. But a lot of the big capital projects we do, uh, we get from state and federal money. Well, that money's drying up. You know, we all thought this casino thing was going to be our savior. It didn't work out. We all thought that the federal government was going to be able to help us, but all we get are unfunded mandates for things like uh, police radios, that, uh, which are good, which we do need, but we didn't have the money to buy them. We had to take money out of our general fund to get them, and I'm glad we have them, and I'm glad our officers are safer. But that's another expense we could have used for, for anything else. And so we're really hurting, and the costs are going up. And we realized that we weren't going to be able to sustain this. And so we had a committee put together of citizens, people who volunteered their time to look at, look at our budget and look at ways to solve it, what we could cut, what we could increase, the best way to have a long-term solution, not just a Band-Aid. And this was, this was a committee of people a lot smarter than I am. And they, they came up with this idea to have the income tax issue that's going to be on the ballot coming up here in November. And what that's going to do is it's going to take money and put it for the police department so that way we can make sure we have a police department and we can continue to have a police department that can do their job of protecting us into the future. And also it addresses the street issue. Because streets have always been an issue in this town. It's something we've been trying to fix. And this is earmarked to go towards both police and the streets. So it's, it's something that will help us be able to pull ourselves out of where we're at with the recession. We're getting there, but we have long-term problems, and the Committee of Citizens said this is the best way to do it. And so I, I really do hope, I know no one likes spending money, and, but I really do hope you consider voting 
yes on this issue coming up on the ballot because it isn't just people wanting more money or wanting pet projects. It's, it's a serious look at the budget despite what wrongs were made by past councils, despite what we should have done or could have done or would have done. We need to look at the issues we have now and how to solve them. Worrying about stuff in the past is like sitting in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you don't get anywhere. We had people who got together and said, this is the solution that we have. And right now, it's really the only solution that we've heard. And I think it's a solution that will work. And I think a lot of people agree that this is a viable solution to get us forward. And I, I hope you'll stand with me in voting yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Lowe, this is Mr. Lowe, I would like to say something. That's not Mr. Yeah, that's my, yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention a couple of things that Bill brought up. You know, with the, with the tax, is gonna, you know, it's in a matter for the police in the streets. And just to go off, you know, we heard some of the, some of the numbers of the police department, but the street numbers are, are really high, are, are another huge expense. For example, and we brought this up at the last meeting, Edbrook is, is one, of the, one of the bad streets in town. It's a big street. And to get that street completely redone is almost a million dollars. And that's, that's an insane amount of money for this town. Now, a lot of people bring up the, uh, the street levy that, we, that was passed, you know, and thankfully that it did, but that was for seed money to generate grants. Uh, you know, that, I believe that uh, only generates roughly $125,000. So even if it, if it didn't even get applied to a grant, which is what it's usually used for, to, to match grant funds and things of that nature, $125,000 just isn't going to cut it. So, you know, this, this other 0.5% five, five tax that we're trying to go after is, it's, it'll, it'll help, but it's still, you know, there's just a lot, a lot of work to be done in the town with the police, the roads. Um, and, and the good thing about the taxes, if you feel that it's not being spent wisely, even though it's only, it's earmarked for those two things, it, it'll be on the ballot again in five years. So if you feel that, hey, they're, they're, you know, they're not getting the job done with what they said they were going to do, well, you have the option to, to vote on it, yay or nay, in five more years. So just, uh, those are just some other things to keep in mind as well. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Um, very eloquently, my three predecessors said some of the high profile reasons that we need this income tax increase. Uh, the Citizens Committee had no input from city administration. They took it upon themselves to determine why we needed money, how best to raise a reasonable amount. The main input that your council had was with that committee, we talked them down a little bit. They wanted to go a full additional percent. Uh, and probably that wouldn't have done. But this is great. This will help us. It will keep us viable. And we can keep providing for ourselves the services that we need as citizens to live in a decent town. So because of that, I also must endorse it wholeheartedly. Uh, Anyone else? Mr. Yeah. Lauer. Yeah, one thing I forgot, um, there will be people that are arguing. Rather than be social media walking up and down the street and doing what we're doing, telling you that you don't need the tax. We don't need it. Do yourself a favor. Ask them the alternative. They have no agents. Ask you the alternative. If there's no tax, what is the other term? A little bit personal here. If you get a chance, you know, you know. Go to Google Maps. Look up a little town called Eldersville, Pennsylvania. I've said this before, but this was my hometown. It had about eight or nine hundred people. It used to be a grocery store, two service stations, and a convenience store. No one cared. They did nothing. Right now, there's not one business in this town, and I will bet everything I own, there's not 300 people in this city. It's not there anymore. It's just pass through it when you go by. It's not allowed something like that to happen in this city. We need to do it. Thank you. Let's finish up with council, if you don't mind. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, John, go ahead. All right, I'm going to be really quick. I'm just like, you know, my colleagues, you know, that they have said almost everything that I was going to say. So another thing that we have to also look at is, you know, where, where does the income come from? It's going to be earned income. It's earned income. It's, Thank you. you know, that's probably the biggest thing that, that 
Well, our generation, the generation here in New Carlisle is getting older, and that's that's what this committee was telling us. You know, uh, what what would uh, be less hurtful? You know, if we put it on as a property tax, as a levy, their their income would would go well, not their income, their expenses would go up. They might not be able to afford, you know, uh, afford it anymore. So, but income, but income, supposedly, you know, goes up every year, so we can get more money back, in the, you know, as we buy. You know, that's one thing that I don't think anybody has said is, you know, where's the money coming from? You know, how, how, you know, how, how much that, that, that can go up? You know, the money that we're going to be using. You know, I'm endorsing it because I look at budgets, I look at numbers, I've looked at numbers for, I don't know, too many years. You know, sometimes they all go together. And, you know, when I look at the budget, I ask a lot of times, you know, how close are, you know, I say it almost every meeting, they, they say it now, almost automatically, we're real close. And we are close. We are close. And, Maybe we're too, you know, I'll, I'll say we're too close to my product, some back taxes. A lot of people don't want to pay taxes. And we were told you know, years ago that, that you can get away from not paying taxes. Well, it's time to pay the piper. You know, we've heard the tune, now it's time to pay the piper. And that's exactly what we're going, going for. You know, I'm endorsing it because I know it's going to go exactly to where we say it's going to go to. That's also important. It's not going to go into the general fund and get going we'll to buy a hundred staplers or something for the for the office or whatever. You know, it's going to the police department, then the remainder will go toward the community. That's what we need. Thank you, John. This area right now is a half percent income tax. Uh, we had a whole schedule of people that had different communities and cities that had income taxes. Uh, there were three, I believe, at that point that were 1% uh, as we are. They were, the others were villages. Uh, I know three or four other communities, including Springfield, are asking for uh, an additional income tax and the same type thing for streets, I think, is what Springfield is looking for. Mm -hmm. we, we need it. We really need it. There's no doubt about it. Uh, sergeants talked about it. We've all talked about it. And, Police department needs cruisers. They need vests. They need other equipment, and it's it's not cheap. Nothing is cheap to be able to do it. This will bring in approximately been out here about a half a million dollars, and it costs over four hundred thousand dollars to have a police presence in New Carlisle on what we're doing right now. That comes out of a general fund, which ties our hands tremendously to do other things with, and the equipment, of course, that they need. So I, I definitely will be voting for it. There's going to be signs available very soon. I think this week, as a matter of fact, if you'd like one, please contact the city building, put it in your yard. I'll be putting ones in my yard front and back. Uh, we do need it. The state, federal government keeps cutting, cutting, cutting on us. Uh, that doesn't help. Now, so the manager's turn. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Tim. I just want to step on your toes one time. I can't find it. Just, uh, you know, people that bring up the numbers online and, and just the conversation, keep in mind that all the city's finances are public information. So, you guys, if anyone out there thinks that, well, the city might be spending too much to repair this vehicle or they're spending too much on, you know, whatever. If you, if you want to look at the books, stop by the city office and they'll show you anything you want to know. It's, it's all public information. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Just to echo the sentence that John said, earned income is only on the paycheck you earn. It's not on Social Security checks or anything else. Just want to make sure that was clear. So. That's correct. Earn, earned income. Yeah, and you can you can start voting today if you want. Um, at 9 o'clock it closes. So. I, I know we have one yes vote. I already voted. So we definitely have one. So far. Now, time to the city manager. Thank, Thank you. you. You mentioned there's yard signs. If right. anybody would like a yard sign, please call me. We have some to put out, and um, we actually have doubled, them, doubled what we thought we were going to have. They made a mistake on the first signs and left a sentence out, and so they gave us 50 more signs for free. So now we have 100 signs to put out. So please call me. 
And also, if you have an hour to donate or two hours to donate to pass out flyers, I started today on my lunch to walk door to door, putting flyers in everybody's door to let them know about this thing on the levee. I could sure use more people to help me walk around the city other than my husband. He's. Do you have this? I, I will get them to you. I want some. I should also say that the uh, levy committee came up with donations and so forth for this. The city did not pay any money as far as the sign. Right, yeah, the from the committee so members and the heritage of flight gave money. Right. It's all done in donations. Yep. So that's it. Yep. Thank you. Well, anyone else? Anything at all? Anyone at all? Public? Anything at all? Sorry, please. I just want to put things in perspective for people. The deputy that was in here tonight, his car is 16 years old. So if you had a daughter or a son born 16 years ago, they've grown up, they've been able to get their driver's license within that time period. So when you have a man out in a car that's 16 years old, that is a long time to own a piece of equipment for the police department. That's what I want people to think about. It's your safety. We want our guys safe up here. We want to be able to get to you if you need us. And it'll happen at the inconvenient moment. You'll, you'll get a knock on the door. You'll have someone yell next door. Uh, there'll be a crash down the street. You have to get there. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Anyone else? Anything? Any staff? Anyone? We just wanted to bring that up tonight again. Um, we'll have a meeting, I guess, right before the election, but that'll be too late for people to see these at that point. So thank you all for being here. Uh, one more time. Anything? Anyone want to say anything? So we're doing an executive session. We have none tonight. And. Uh, Mr. Mayor. That's what I was looking for. Yes, Mr. Lamb. We'll be adjourned. We are. Thank you.